why Genshin Impact has changed modern gacha games. I agree. Well, Genshin Impact kind of walked so other gacha games can run. I 1 million percent agree, right? Because I feel that if Genshin Impact never occurred or never happened, I, I don't think any of these new gacha games would try to break the mold. Because I'll be real, the best the best gacha games we had before Genshin Impact's history was like what? Arknights, Fate Grand Order. What else really was there? This was truly the first ground breaking Seven Deadly Sins. That one was terrible. Okay, that that game was so bad. Dokkan, eh? Let's be real, guys. Dokkan without the DBZ, ah, uh, DBZ identity is a dead game. That game is based on IP and IP alone because the gameplay fucking sucks. Let's just keep it hundred percent, man. Let's keep it hundred percent. E seven, yeah. E seven Summoners War, yeah, hundred percent. Those games are actually pretty. Fun, pretty good turn-based RPGs. But uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Genshin Impact for what it did, but I, I don't have respect for what it's doing currently, which is essentially stifling the players uh, repeatedly at every update and treating them like trash. But uh, let's see what this guy has to say. There's no scarier time for a gacha game than the slow venture lead up to its launch. Yep. This is the time when most attention is on them, when every ounce of coverage is being consumed by TikTok filled zoomers and middle age weebs. We have seen this happen to I'm really glad they used the word oomphy for TikTok zoomers because, good God, bro, these dumbass mother with their hip zoomer lingo makes me want to puke, bro. They have to make up these dumbass fucking words for nothing just to feel different and special, unique or special. It's just, it's just so goddamn, it's so cringe. I mean, and I really don't think that's, like, me getting old as a take. Like, bro, for real, if you use the word oomphy on Twitter, like, all of my oomphies, bro, good God, get off the platform, get a job, okay? Focus on your studies in school. I mean, holy shit, that is insane. Zenla Zone Zero, the upcoming gacha game developed by our lord and savior, Oyoverse. Recently having carried out their second closed beta test, CZZ has undergone much criticism. Yep either due to some censorship or questionable design choices. You think they'll revert the Nicole Titty changes? Because somewhere deep down in my heart, I'm, I'm really hoping they do. But I just, I just really don't think that they will. And it's a shame because Nicole could have been the number one waifu in all of gacha games. Because her personality is perfect. Her boobs were the, the exact size they needed to be. And then they just stripped her. They stripped her and spanked her and said, nope, not for you, buddy. Take out the little, the little cushions in your bra, bud. Take them out. Among some other technical issues, deep inside, we know that ZZZ will not fail. This is a post kitchen Hoyoverse title after all. But Yeah, no, 100%. Now, ZZZ has no room to fail, but it will also depend on how much it succeeds. And also, Genshin Impact's community says, well, if you don't do better than Genshin, you're a failure. That's what they say, at least. Uh, just remember when they said, oh, yeah, well, Honkai Star Rail won't outsell Genshin. And then they do it five patches in a row and they shit their little pants. And then once Honkai Star Rail decides to have a slow patch and then Genshin goes back to outselling them because they released Fontaine, they act like they're the kings of Jesus Christ themselves. Uh, it is the most irritating shit on Earth. And just wait for when 2.0 Honkai Star Rail comes out and they outsell Genshin once again, we'll see them crying once again. I, that's why I love being in this community. Because the drama against these two communities that should be working together is hilarious. There is genuine concern for the state of the game, leading to this critical backlash following the CBT, which is not to say that people hate the game, they simply just want it to be better. Yet there's no yep. denying that the mixed reception to the game has some players concerned. Yep. At least Snake is working out for them. Yeah, Snake's really good. I actually like that quite a bit. I actually like the mini game room a lot more than I thought it would. I, the problem with Zenless Zone Zero is that if they want to make it work, they're going to have to do the Kuro Games Wuthering Wave treatment. And the other problem is with Zenless Zone Zero, I, I'm just going to say this. Zenless Zone Zero is a much worse Wuthering Waves. It is. The combat is less complex. You can't do as much in it as you can in Wuthering Waves. And the world is much smaller and the story writing is worse. But Zenless Zone Zero does, in my opinion, look flashier and have better graphics, right? So that is what they have going for them. Because I, I do think that the color palette and design choices is, is pretty much second to none in Hoyoverse. I mean, these are Hoyoverse created waifus, right? But this game really needs to get out before Wuthering Waves in order to form a habit with their players before Wuthering Waves comes out to convince them to not play. Because if this game comes out after Wuthering Waves, it is not going to be good at all. And the problem is... This game needs a lot of work. I'm going to say it, boys. They're going to need to do either a complete overhaul on the TV system or they're going to need to take it out. Because I mean this genuinely, probably less than 5% of players actually like the f 
TV system. Well, most of the time. But without the safety net that is a brand such as Hoyoverse or Yostar, yep. other gacha games tend to have it worse. There is no Arknights fandom to be funneled into the Enfield pipeline. They are instead independent titles that can only capture a fraction of what other gachas can. But there have been some exceptions. Okay, so Arknights does have a pretty large fan base. I want to correct this. It's just not comparable to Genshin Impacts, right? Because Genshin Impact, in case you don't know why Genshin Impact has such a huge fan base for anybody who's new, who's watching this for the first time, maybe you've never seen my channel before. And if you haven't, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Glad to have you here. And follow me on twitch.tv forward slash techdown. Genshin Impact got this huge buff due to the relevancy of COVID-19 uh, COVID in the world where analytics for video games and YouTube and Twitch were up by over 417%. So Genjimek got all of these people in this disaster period of the world. And so it has so many people who are willing to play whatever Hoyoverse title is released because they have been chronically addicted to their games in a time of severe distress. This game brought them comfort. Hence why the game still has so many players, even though they treat them like shit. You know, I mean, Genjimek gets three pulls, Honkai Star Rail gets 10 and a free five star. Right? It, it's just like, they kind of know that Genshin Impact players are going to accept whatever butt slop they, you know, they give their players. And uh, the, the community doesn't fight back at all. Look at Reverse 1999, for example. This game comes from the studio Blue Pock, yep. an independent team that both developed and published a game with no other credit to their name. Yet despite being something of a smaller title, Reverse found itself in the limelight, becoming one of the more prevalent talking pieces of this year. At no. No, it wasn't. It was a flash in the pan. Reverse 1999 never had legs to stand on. Nobody gives a f about this game. Uh, let me double check here real quick. I mean, I don't. I don't even think it's even remotely comparable. Like, I don't even think. I don't even think it's even remotely comparable. Yeah, let's be real. The Reverse 1999 Twitch section has 24 viewers. 24. Let's look at Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact has 9,000, and they're all a bunch of people who aren't doing shit. And even one guy is just reacting to my content. And I don't even think he speaks English. Que, que, que otra. Es bastante posible. Mucho... I mean, bro, even Italians are reacting to my content. They don't even know what the f*** is going on. Yeah, I mean, reverse 1999, it just, it just does not have legs to stand on, unfortunately. At least in terms of gacha games. And that is due to multiple factors. From its unique concept to its stellar presentation, among others to which I shall cover later. But before that, I want to bring up another gacha game that also found major success. And this title may or may not come to you as a surprise. Genshin Impact is probably the largest gacha game released to this day. Yep. Both in its overwhelming success. By far. As well as its dire risk. To those who may not. And that makes me really happy because this is where like all the normies go to play their video games. Genshin Impact is the majority of people's first gacha game. Right. And that makes me really happy because then you don't really get the outraged babies in the other games because they're just chronically addicted to this one. And that's why the Honkai Star Rail community is generally so nice. And the Genshin Impact community, not all of it, but it's it's pretty just baby rage. It's insane. Not no. Genshin was one of the largest risks any video be, game please. company has ever taken, with development and marketing costs that reached numbers of up to 100 million US dollars. Yep. And prior to the game's development, the only major hit that MiHoYo had at the time was Honkai okay, Impact 3rd, which, yes, is still quite popular in the grand scheme of things, but in comparison to what Genshin had become, Honkai is practically just another gacha game to the wayside. Absolutely, and the thing that Hoyoverse does really well is they like to copy other games and attempt to put their own spin on them. Like, for example, Genshin Impact is just a, a weebified, a more weebified version of Breath of the Wild. No offense to those who enjoy Honkai, by the way, but now Hoyoverse has become a juggernaut in the gacha game sphere, yep. with multiple titles that are bound to be successful due to the power of their brand. Hoyoverse is now essentially what Blizzard used to be. Right, so any Blizzard title that ever got released, everybody would try. There was World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft was so successful. Then there was Hearthstone, Diablo, uh, Overwatch. Like they, they are really trying to go the Blizzard route and make one game of every genre. To which I have nothing else to add. I think the success speaks for itself. The reason why I want to mention these games is to show that, no matter your history, whether you were an up and rising powerhouse of a company, or even just another independent studio trying to break into the scene, any gacha game is capable of reaching the heights of other big hitters, yep. so long as they manage to play their cards right. And that is what I want to cover in this video. Yeah, because now, because Genshin Impact is dropping the ball so hard, it's actually opening up the gacha space quite a bit to where people are looking for competition in any place they can possibly find it.
any place, like anything to compete with Genjimek and give players what they wanted from the game. So Genjimek is actually indirectly or actually directly helping many other businesses by dropping the ball with their own game. What does a gacha game need to succeed in the modern market? And how does the lasting impact of Genjin affect that market? I think genuinely all a gacha game needs to succeed in 2024 is just the ability to communicate and respect their players. Uh, that's pretty much it. Fair rates and not over predatorial uh, purchases, as well as a viable free to play model that you can boost if you spend money. I'm pretty sure that's honestly it. And then probably good character design and uh, just make it fun. Yeah. To make sure this video is as objective as it can be, I am not going to cover factors like game. You also need to cover to where it can be enjoyed by a casual, but also have a hardcore aspects in it if people do want to push the boundaries. Player graphics, because those tend to be very subjective to personal taste. No, yep. not everyone likes the granite art style of Ark Knights. And no, not nice. everyone likes the elemental reaction gameplay of Genshin. I am going yep. to talk about why I think to be some factors that every gacha game needs in order to succeed, or at the very least needs to hit the ground running. And I will be mentioning other gacha games to provide further examples. But that is all for introductions. Let us now talk about how Genshin Impact has changed modern gacha games. Remember when I said I wasn't going to cover factors like gameplay or graphics because yep. those are very subjective? Doesn't matter. Well, you remembered wrong. Modern gacha games need good narratives. They do. Good story, good lore, good world building. One okay, I don't necessarily think they need good story. I really don't. I think it helps because there is an audience that will play every six weeks or so whenever it's updated to just find out what happens next. And I don't think that you want to neglect that audience because generally they're more casual. And when people play more casual, they have to spend more to quote unquote catch up and FOMO works a lot better on them. So it does help, but I still don't think it's needed because there is a lot of players who don't give a f about the story whatsoever One or any combination of these are important for a gacha game success there was a time when i would have been laughed at for saying narrative is important in a gacha game because there is a reason why gacha gamers are so infamous for mashing that skip button yep absolutely until there was no skip button and then everything changed this yep. is post genshin times we are talking about genshin impact a game so renowned that some people only play the game when there is new story content to do. And this expectation has sort of carried on into other gacha games as well. Because what people Which tend to really forget- Which is really insane because the Genjin story is really not that good. But it is better than other gacha game story. Or at least the broad majority. There's obviously some outliers, but uh, the Genjin Impact story is it's, it's okay. I mean, like, what are you going to recommend somebody watch? Genshin Impact Story or Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul or any of the top 10 anime from the past year or but any of the top 100 anime from the past decade? You know, like, it's okay, but Genshin Story is so overhyped. It has nice moments, but it takes so long to get there. It's barely even worth it sometimes. Fontaine is very good, but would I tell somebody to go from all the way from 1.0 to 3.6 just to get the Fontaine story? No. Absolutely not. That is that gacha games fall under the growing umbrella of live service video games. In other words, video games that are designed to ship content over time, rather than shipping one content complete package. The point of live service games is player retention, to make sure that players are either always playing a game or always coming back. And yep. this is done through things such as dailies, weeklies, limited time events, limited time rewards, so on and so forth. This is how all gacha games I will say that the, the thing that pisses me off the most about limited time rewards is when there's a weapon that's given to players for free where if they don't do the event, you can't get any more and it's best in slot. I really just don't think that's a good business decision because that's going to make your players feel like no matter what they do, if they don't play that, they're they're never going to want to come back, right? Like, it's so frustrating. Like, for example, yeah, the Silver Wolf, the Silver Wolf Light Cone. That's got to piss people off who run Pela. Like, that's so irritating. Is there no way to go back to that event and get it? Because I can't imagine how frustrated players must be if they don't have that Light Cone because it's actually so good games operate drift feeding content to ensure that you will feel the need to come back or you know you can always fork up hundreds of thousands of dollars for some pretty pixels either way you are doing exactly i'll be real bro when i buy a pretty pixel skin like an azure land the disappointment for me is immeasurable when i go inside the game and it's a chibi right these skins need to look 
how they look outside of the game, inside of the game. And if your character artwork doesn't exactly represent what the character looks like in game, then don't advertise them that way. It's cringe, it's deceptive, and I hate that shit. It's a complete f like yeah, like Nikkei, for example. Nikkei, they look exactly like their character splashes, and they're beautiful. Exactly what these games want you to do. But after Genshin and the many new gacha gamers that had spawned as a result, now narrative has become a real reason to come back to a gacha game. Because due to the nature of live service games, rather than having to write one story from beginning to end, now you can write one story that is forever evolving over time, in addition to other stories that can be written along the way further building on what story had come before. And so long as the players are happy with each new story, then there is enough reason for them to come back every so often. And that is not even mentioning other factors, like limited time events and rewards. Of course, that is not to say that there haven't been gacha games with good narratives. I mean, Fate Grand Order comes to mind, but narrative on its own has never really been the big selling point that Genshin has made it out to be. Only after Genshin did the wider market realize that gacha games can also have good stories. But how will this play out for a newer gacha game? Why should the narrative be prioritized above most everything else? Truth be told, new gacha games need some sort of hook in order to reel in players. A game can have good gameplay and good graphics, but those things tend to be the more stagnant elements of the game and can easily wear down over time, especially for a gacha game, where a majority of your time is spent doing the same thing over and over again. But a narrative, on the other hand, is forever developing. Imagine playing. Nah, that's terrible. I disagree with that entirely. You literally can't say gameplay comes second to the story because you just do it all the time so it eventually get boring. That makes no sense. Like, if you evolve the things that you can do with your characters and the combat that you can do, then people will be invested to come back. One million percent. If you say there's a new endgame mode, a new playstyle, people will 100% be incentivized. Uh, case in point, Honkai Star Rail. Honkai Star Rail has good story and also has good gameplay for people who enjoy turn-based RPGs. And people will get hyped as f about pure fiction just as much as they're excited to go to Patagonia. You, you, they're, they're the same. You need both, right? In this argument, you would need both, right? You can't just say, oh, yeah, gameplay doesn't matter, just make a good story. Because if that's the truth, then just watch the f anime, right? It's a f game, right? It's a game first, not a f anime. So you need both for this argument. In a gacha game on release, and you find yourself falling in love with the characters, the story, the world, and you play this knowing that this is not the end. Your journey does not end once you finish the story on release. Your journey only ends once the game decides to end. That promise of being able to continue seeing the story and world you love is what keeps you playing. And in order to achieve that promise, New gacha games need to land that first impression. I mean, I think that's a really good point when he argues it like that, where he says, you know, if you play a game and then you beat everything in the game, you'll stop playing the game. But if you play the game, you beat the story and you know that there's more coming, uh, then great. But the same thing happens for a lot of MMORPGs where someone beats a raid, but then people farm that raid to get best in slot gear going into the next raid so it can work for both right i don't know why the argument is being said it only works for one new gacha games need that one story beat like for example when you know the story is going to continue and you're going to a harder zone then you would need to farm the game to get better gear in order to progress to that story that one cliffhanger to really make the player say yeah i want to see more because yeah. while good gameplay and good graphics can do some of the legwork a good narrative is ever more lasting uh, assuming that the developers actually make the effort to do so, of course. But I'll leave that conversation for later. Right now, we are instead going to head that straight into so the sick. next point of discussion. That, that, that seems so sick. Okay, time for the obligatory Wuthering Wave section. Here we go. Modern gacha games need good marketing. One million percent. And I'm glad Wuthering Waves is being talked about more. This is very good. Like, I, I don't think you understand how big for Kuro Games being compared to Genshin Impact is. Because... Being compared, I'm just going to be real, guys. Being compared to Genshin Impact, oh, this is, sounds awful. It's kind of like me reacting to a smaller creator's video, right? Like, it's going to take some of my audience and send them over there. So even being mentioned in the same sentence means that you are getting some of your player base and pushing it over there, which is huge. Like, it is huge. And especially because the Genshin Impact community is so hypersensitive, they're going to bitch and moan and cry and say, Ah! Wuthering Waves! Leave my Genshin alone! You can't! Right? And then that's going to drive so many people over to Wuthering Waves because there's so many f people furious, furious at Genshin. In fact, it's enough to make another game relevant. 
In the grand medium of entertainment, marketing is just as important of an asset as the production behind a piece of media. Yeah. Look to the film industry, for example, where marketing expenses can either match the cost of production or even surpass it depending yep. on the scale of the project. Marketing is vital in making sure a property is successful because without anyone knowing what that property is, then it may as well not exist. Once again, I agree. the film industry. So for the very niche market, Like guys, let's say I made the best gacha game in the planet and then I didn't tell anybody about it. Do you think it would sell if I just have it on my phone, but I don't show anybody my phone? How the f*** is anybody going to know it exists? Equal development to equal marketing. Always. Market that is gacha games? Companies will have to do their all to get their game out there, especially so if they have no brand power behind their name. Though that is not to say a brand alone will guarantee a game success. I think- Well, I mean, it, it will definitely certainly not help. I mean, I'll be real. Every single streamer on the entire platform gets Genshin Impact sponsorships almost monthly since the very start of the f game. It's actually insane. Like, it is actually f insane. You, you, you could, it was like Raid Shadow Legends. The amount of traction Raid Shadow Legends got from just every single person talking about it was insane. And the game sucked balls. The game, su well, remember, not sucked, sucks balls. It's terrible. Everybody knows it's terrible, right? But when it's pushed that much, like, eh, might as well try it. If everybody else is doing it, I might play it. And that'll give you enough to like sink your teeth in and play it even more. I think the best way to understand the importance of marketing is to look at our very own Genshin Impact. Taking us back to the year of 2019, when Genshin was first revealed at E3. Sort of sad out to explain this, but E3 used to be one of the biggest events in all of the gaming industry, where companies like Nintendo, Sony, and Xbox among others would hold conferences that would bring together gamers across the whole world to witness their favorite video game characters not get into Super Smash Bros. That should give an idea of how much money Mihoyo had put into Genshin's marketing for this random anime gacha game to be on the same stage as gaming's most beloved players, such as Shigeru Miyamoto or Bobby Kotick. Now, not all that came from this reveal was positive. Ever since its first trailer, Genshin has always been accused of being an anime clone of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Not accused, it just, it, it is a clone. Like, it is legit a Breath of the Wild clone. Everybody knows that. You can't play this game without seeing the similarities. Which did not help that. It's like Pokemon being a clone of Dragon Quest, or Power World being a clone of Pokemon and Dragon Quest. At the same exact event, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was also first revealed. There is no denying that many of Genshin's features were directly inspired by those found in Breath of the Wild. But there was one difference that really separated Genshin from the game. Genshin is still not on the Nintendo Switch. Yep. Three years, Horrorverse. Three years. But as some people say, bad publicity is still publicity. And so Genshin had actually bolstered its popularity due to word of mouth. The tagline of Breath of the Waifu had spread like wildfire. Yep. Give the game another year of marketing and some COVID-19 to boot. And now yep. Genshin Impact has become a monolith in the video game. Breath of the Waifu. I forgot about that shit, bro. That shit was everywhere. Game industry. And that does not end there. Live streams. Character demos. YouTube ads, sponsorships, collaborations, reaction content, no matter where you look. Yeah, you're welcome. Whether you are a fan of Genshin or not, you will always see this game, which really shows just how effective marketing can be. And not just Genshin either. Again, look at Reverse 1999 for example, no. because the game marketed itself very well. No, you no. saw YouTube ads, sponsored streams, even appearances at gaming events like Tokyo Game Show. If not for its marketing, I'm not sure Reverse would have found the same success. It, it, dude, the, the success of Reverse 1999 is borderline non-existent, right? They might make money, but like they did not put enough, they did not put enough investment into getting content creators to cover the game, right? The, the presence it has on Twitch is non-existent. I don't know how it is on YouTube, but I've, I've never seen a Reverse 1999 video ever, ever. Even t at least not to the scale as any other gacha game and gacha game views are just, oh my God. They, they are they are insane on YouTube. Tower of Fantasy exploded when it first launched, sponsoring every creator on every platform. Yes, sir. And purchasing ad spots during live events, on top of riding the Genshin Killer Wave. Now, I have been talking a lot about how good marketing can benefit a gacha game, but I also need to talk about the consequences of bad marketing. And what better example do we have than Punishing Grey Raven? One of the best gacha games that nobody 
knows about. Oh, Curl Games, you naughty, naughty boy. That being said, yeah. I've never seen that camera before. They look hot as f Actually, I can't even call you naughty because you've barely done anything at all. Punishing Grey Raven has a reputation of being one of the better action gacha games on the market. That is due to its unique combat systems as well as its spectacular encounters. And really, when people see this game as the major competitor to titles like Honkai Pack 3rd and Zone Zone Zero, then you know that PGR at least brings something to the table. But despite how much good there is in the game, PGR has two major flaws. First, the new player experience isn't the most friendly, even though the game has made some- That's the thing with Genshin Impact is that they know that they can sink enough useless garbage down your throat to think that they make you think that something's coming because all Genshin Impact is is new player experience. Everything they do is for the new player. They just do nothing for the veterans. That's why generally the life cycle of a Genshin Impact fan is they start it, they play it, they love it, realize there's nothing there, and then they quit. Or they become a mindless zombie of their former self. Improvements. Many of its systems are still very foreign. From the unique combat to the visual novel-like storytelling, the game tends to filter out many new players. And the second major flaw that comes hand in hand with the new player experience is the game's poor marketing. There is literally an inside joke that we the players have to market this game ourselves. Because yep. Curl Games unfortunately- That's not a joke. A, a lot of these true ass statements are underneath the guise of humor. It's, it's literally not a joke. It's the truth. And everybody knows it. It, it is, it is horrible. I've never received a PGR sponsor ever. Me. My ass. And if the biggest gotcha game creator in all of YouTube and Twitch doesn't receive that shit, who the f else will? The answer is f nobody. It's insane. Like these people are insane. Like, dude, dude, dude. It's like it's like saying, oh yeah, bro, we 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 shouldn't advertise our sponges to SpongeBob. We don't want SpongeBob to endorse our sponges. Oh, we don't want KFC to endorse our chicken. It's like, bro, it's it's not hard, bro. It's not hard. Regslet? No, Regslet's a good player, but he's not the biggest gacha creator by any means. He's not even close. I don't think he's even in the top 50, but he's very good at the game and he's a good dude. But as far as outreach goes, like, no gacha creator has the outreach that I do. And that's not an egotistical statement. That's just a fact. He fumbles in that apartment. Hey y'all, I'm doing my job. Have they gotten better? Well, apparently people are finally getting YouTube ads for PGR. And Kuro even advertised their game on the billboards of Times Square. So sure, but that is not enough. Just this year alone, Punishing Grey Raven has received a slew of updates, such as English VA for all characters, massive improvements to the new player Good. experience, new Gentoo characters- They need to work on the UI, that shit's a mess. Characters that have transformative gameplay, and an official PC client. Pretty exciting, right? Copy Fall Guys or copy Persona 5 for your UI and it'll always look good. Well, let me ask you this. As someone within the gacha gaming circle, have you heard of any of these updates? If you have played PGR, then maybe. But beyond that... PGR is currently getting a buff, so this, this, this... This point might be falling on deaf ears. He was like, oh, I heard about PGR all the time. The only reason why you're he hearing about PGR now is because of Wuthering Waves. Because Wuthering Waves is actually marketing quite well. And uh, content creators are talking about it in, in mass because, let's be real, guys. You want to know why? Because they know that's the next gravy train. Okay? They know it. Everyone knows that's the next big game. They all know it, and they're trying to prepare. And honestly, good on them. Okay? It's good to be prepared. It's good. It's great. No shame whatsoever. But uh, they know that Kuro Games has something special. So PGR is getting a little bit of a rub. Probably not. Because Kuro once again did not market these updates all too much. Look, I don't want to turn this into a Kuro Games roasting session. Because one, I actually love their games or game as of now. And two, I'm sure they already catch enough hands as it is. But this should serve as a lesson for them. Especially with the upcoming release of Wuthering Waves. I don't think shit talking uh, Kuro Games' marketing capabilities is going to rub anyone the wrong wrong way besides mindless fucking dipshits on the internet. And to be honest, who gives a fuck what they think of anyways? It's a very serious issue. It doesn't mean that their game is bad. It means that their company uh, policies are bad and they need to market better. But they've also learned, so there's not really much left to say. And it's not really shit talk. It's just the truth. It's like, it's like calling me bald. It's like, okay. 
True. Regardless of whether or not the game turns out to be good, without proper marketing, Wuthering will never even have the chance to prove its worth. So far, the game does seem to be taking the right steps, appearing at several gaming events, as well as releasing the occasional character demo, hopefully leading up to the eventual announcement of another closed beta test. But once the countdown starts for Wuthering's actual release, then Kuro needs to pull out all stops in order to guarantee a successful launch. Spam those YouTube ads, sponsor every creator on every platform. Just sponsor me. That's it. Just give me early access. Sponsor me. I'll make you 30 videos in one month, Wuthering Waves. Sponsor the f out of me. I want to retire playing your game. I will sell my soul for a $2 million contract. Give me $2 million. I will play Wuthering Waves every day for six hours for a year. And that's the only game I play. Go ahead. Give me two mil. You know how many giveaways I can do with that shit? I'll be able to buy one of my chatters a house. Sell out to any opportunity you can. Do whatever it takes in order to get your game out there. And this goes for every single gacha game. I mean, shit, all the Genshin creators are getting it. So why the fuck can't I get one? Your Breakers, your Enfield. You think they collect the mint and berries for fun? Hell no. Your Project Mugen? Anything goes. Because in this post Genshin era, you need to market your gacha game. Or else consumers will become complacent with the games they already play. Why do you think they play the variety games on their alt account and not on their main channel? Because the contract says they can't. Word of mouth is not enough. You have to give the people a reason to play your game. And while we are talking about a reason to play, modern gacha games need good support. Encapsulating everything we have talked about in this video, post-launch support is needed for a gacha game to prosper. While onboarding new players is Bro. important, Retaining this game those so players fire. is just as, if not even more What is it called? Like Breakers Break the Planet or some shit? This game also looks gas as f To a game's success. And this can be accomplished in many ways. Not just including good narrative and good marketing. Striving to bring more to the players is of utmost importance. Because complacency is the death of live service games. Without even trying to bring meaningful That's updates, what the players are than likely to fall off. Think of Genshin and its number of updates. To compare the base version to now, there have been many additions to Genshin that rendered the game forward into its initial 2020 release. Not just in actual content drops, but also system changes, quality of life changes, and meta changes. Are these changes groundbreaking? No. No. At least not all of them. Barely but they do. are enough to retain the game's players throughout these last three years. I mean, pretty much the difference between Genshin now and Genshin in the beginning is map bigger and dendro. Am I crazy? Like, am I am I nuts? Like, straight, straight up. Oh, and then, oh, we took some of the things that suck out of the game and make them suck a little bit less for the quality of life. There you go. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Like to think that Noel means are finally eating after years of Geo downplaying and Ito propaganda, and all it took was for Genshin to release its first ever character with an actual personality. But on the other hand... True! And you know what the worst thing was? People were saying Farina was a terrible character. The amount of pushback Farina got, I was like, oh my god, shut the f up. She's the first one who actually has goddamn emotion. That's at least not annoying about it, like Fischl. Because goddamn, Fischl is so f irritating. Oh, the princess in Vertilung. Oh my god, shut the f up. Like, Farina is so good because she's so stupid, bro. It's so good. And... Genshin's patch cycle also has its flaws. Upon the release of a new region, excitement for the game is then all-time high, only to then decelerate with each passing version, until the cycle continues once more. Like compare the latter half of Sumeru and the launch of Fontaine, and there is a stark difference. Regardless of said flaws, Genshin is still net positive when it comes to player numbers, so rather than fixing something that is not broken, Hoyoverse instead brought this model over to their newer game. No, no. Okay, don't say why fix what's not broken in Genshin Impact. Okay, that's like saying a cup still works if it has a leak in it. Yeah, you can still pour liquid in the cup, but there's fluid leaking out the bottom, but you might want to patch that up. Okay, now we're at 70%. Why haven't you patched up? Oh, the cup still works. Yeah, but it's got a leak. It's at 60% now, bro. Patch it up. Oh, well, it's still a cup. Okay, well now... Now it's at 10% and well, it's not leaking anymore because the the leak was at the 20% mark, so it can't get any lower. It's like, okay, or you can patch it up so it can be filled again. Bonkai Star Rail, and most likely Zenless Zone Zero. Now I could explain why this model does or does not work with Star Rail, 
But I will instead recommend you watch my last video, where I uncover why an open world Topaz would not so work fun. the game. Because one, the points I talked about in that video sort of elaborates further on what I've said here. Bro, Honkai Star Rail open world would be ass. I would not like that at all. You want to know why? Because it would break my immersion constantly. You have this big open world, and then you go into battle, and then that triggers a cutscene where you enter an instance. It would just look terrible, right? So this way, when the instances happen in the instance, it doesn't feel as bad. But having an open world that triggers constant instances just feels weird as shit. I don't like that shit at all. You're walking around. Like, why do you think... When Pokemon was instance, they had instance combat. But now that Pokemon is open world, it doesn't have instance combat, right? For like Pokemon Arceus, right? It just works better. But like constant instancing in an open world just feels really bad. And two, I need more engagement. But for other- And to be honest, Honkai Star Rail's world still feels really good to explore. Genuinely. Gotcha Games to adopt a similar support model is not outside the realm of possibility. In fact, it is very likely. I mean, most have already adopted the 50-50 pity system, so why stop there? And for some games, it works. Others, not so much. But that further proves just how much of an impact Genshin has on the market. For so many games to be using systems spawned by the corporate minds at Hoyoverse, modern gacha games have changed for better or for worse. Companies have to adapt in order to keep up with the new market. No more releasing yep. random mobile games in order to cash in on a quick check. Now you have to sustain a product in order to reap the rewards. Be I mean, it's really good because, you know what, I'll give my take at the end of this video. Because gacha games are already such a volatile market, where some manage to find an audience, while others simmer off without even a single trace. Not only do the players lose out on a game they enjoy, but the people behind the game also lose on a project they either loved or relied on to get by. In any year full of layoffs throughout all of the gaming industry, I think no one would want that for anybody. So please, make good games. That is all that we ask for. Yep. True. Speaking of layoffs, did y'all see the awards of games 2023? To think that our Genshin Impact got stood up by this little game known as Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, who has ever even heard of Baldur's Gate 3? Not like everyone and their mother was talking all year about this critically acclaimed award winning video game. Of course not. Not at all. But surely, had Genshin won the award, then maybe Hoyoverse would have given us a free 5 star character. Yeah, but the problem is the game doesn't deserve to win that award. So this argument makes no sense. For I know this is a joke, but Genshin did not deserve that reward. Right? Who am I kidding? Genshin could never. True! True! Damn, that is brutal. Banger video here's the thing genshin back inspired modern day gacha games by saying if you make a good game people will come and it also inspired modern gacha games by saying oh god yo biggest gacha game is slipping up let's just do these easiest updates they refuse to do and capitalize on their market every single game is going to vulturize and predator and, and, and feed upon genshin impact's ever sinking player base immediately because they see a sinking ship they see it. There is one choice. Either devs make the game that we all want, other devs that aren't Genshin Impact, or Genshin Impact pulls their head out of their ass and actually fixes their f***ing game. Either way, it works. Either way, the players are going to get... The players are going to get what they want. It just depends who's going to deliver it. But that's just my opinion.